I know money is a very scary thing for a lot of us, and the main reason is because we never learn about money growing up from our parents or teachers. And oftentimes, I see a lot of people make these common money mistakes even though they have good intentions of becoming better in their finances. So in today's video, I kind of want to share with you some of the mistakes that I made and the five money things I no longer do after getting my finances together. First and foremost, I don't put off investing. I actually prioritize it. The first thing I do every month is put money into my retirement accounts and use that money to buy assets that are going to grow over time. And I know that I'm a bit of a boring or conservative investor where I like to buy these funds that track the S&P 500. And this is what I really do every month and every week where I buy a couple of S&P 500 funds or S&P 500 components no matter where the stock market is. According to Charles Schwab, delaying investing can drastically reduce future wealth. Their studies show that someone who waited to invest missed out on nearly, get this, 68% of potential returns over 20 years compared to someone who invested right away. According to Fidelity, starting to invest 10 years later can leave you with only half the retirement savings. A person who starts at 25 has over double the savings at 65 than someone who waits until 35 to begin. A big misconception that most people have is that they think they need a lot of money to start investing, maybe like $50,000 or $100,000 to get started. But in reality, all you really need is a couple hundred dollars or for those of you who are extreme budgeters a couple thousand dollars to put into your retirement accounts every month what's more important is how much time you invest in the stock market and if you're young really time is your greatest friend because you can take advantage of compound interest one of my favorite Chinese proverbs says this the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago the second best time is now and for those of you who want to get started with investing but you're still a little hesitant really now is the time to get started. I had a lot of teacher friends where I told them many years ago that it's so important to get started with investing because again, you wanna take advantage of compound interest. But even sharing with them the importance of investing two years, three years, four years later, they still give me responses like, oh, I'm still choosing the best brokerages or I'm still trying to figure out what the best investment is. And really the longer you delay investing, the more opportunity costs you're going to have. I have a live stream coming up on Tuesday for beginning who want to get started with investing and I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to join it. The second thing I don't do with my money anymore is buy items just because they're on sale. According to a Retail Me Not study, 68% of shoppers admit they are more likely to buy something they don't need if it's on sale. According to the Journal of Consumer Research, psychological pricing studies show that consumers are drawn to discounted prices even when it leads to overspending. I found that in my 20s, a lot of times I kind of fell into this trap of just buying something because it's Black Friday or I see that it's 60 or 70% off. However, I then realized that a lot of the stuff that I actually buy, I don't really even need in the first place. Currently, I'm cleaning a lot of stuff in my home, in my closets, in my office, in my garage, and I'm finding that there are a lot of things that I accumulated over the years that I really didn't even use that much that I probably use like two, three, or maybe even four times. This is a funny but pretty true quote by Sydney Carroll where she said, a bargain ain't a bargain unless it's something you need. The third thing that I stopped doing with my money is putting my money in a regular savings account. By now, by watching a lot of my short form videos, you know that I don't like putting my money in a regular savings account because of the low interest. Because we're currently in a high interest environment, it's so much better in my opinion to put your savings into a high yield savings account. There are so many high yield savings accounts out there right now where they give you at least four to 5% interest compared to leaving your money at Chase, Wells Fargo, or Bank of America where they only give you 0.01%. According to Charles Schwab, inflation typically outpaces savings accounts interest. The average savings account interest in the US is around 0.5%, but inflation has hovered around two to 3%, meaning your money loses value. According to a nerd wallet study, high yield savings accounts typically offer five to 10 times higher interest rates than regular savings accounts, helping your money grow faster. You probably already know this by now, but because inflation has been super high over the past couple of years, leaving your money in a regular savings account where it gets very low interest, you're actually losing a lot of buying power. This is why it's so important for all of you watching this to make sure that you put your money in some sort of account that has higher interest to outpace inflation or at least keep up with it. The fourth thing that I stopped doing was I stopped using debit cards. 
I use credit cards instead. According to Experian, 83% of credit card users earn rewards and points, which can offset their spending. In contrast, debit cards offer no such benefits. According to a 2022 NerdWallet study, credit cards offer far better fraud protection compared to debit cards with $0 liability in most fraud cases. If you're someone who can use a credit card just like a debit card and make sure that you pay off your bills on time, a credit card is seriously the better choice than using a debit card. Of course, you get the points, the cash back, and all the other rewards. But on top of that, it's also important to remember that you get way more protection using a credit card compared to a debit card. When you use a debit card, it's directly linked to your checking account. So whenever you swipe your card, money is automatically extracted from your checking account. So if someone were to steal and use your debit card, then your money is pretty much gone. Like it's very, very difficult to get that money back. This is compared to using Using a credit card where you're not using your own money in the beginning, you're actually using the bank's money. And the banks have a higher incentive of getting their money back compared to getting your money back. The fifth thing that I stopped doing was to spend less time with people with broke and poor mindsets. According to a study published in the journal Psychological Science, social influence plays a significant role in financial decisions. People tend to adopt the financial behaviors of their close peers, including spending habits and attitudes towards safety. According to research from the National Bureau of Economics, individuals who are exposed to peers with higher incomes are more likely to engage in higher savings rates, while those surrounded by people who spend more tend to mirror those behaviors. I notice that whenever I hang out with people who are constantly negative or constantly complaining, I kind of start becoming even more negative myself. However, I notice that whenever I hang out with positive people and all of these go-getters, I typically become positive and have this positive energy myself too. I notice that whenever people hang out with friends who are very active and really like working out, they tend to also want to become more active and also want to work out too. I also notice that when people hang out with friends with specific interests or hobbies like playing basketball or pickleball or badminton, then those people also then become more interested in these sports too. And I really believe that the main reason for this is that we want to make sure that we fit into our community, that we fit into these groups. So if you're someone who wants to grow your wealth and wants to start saving and investing, then it's very important that you surround yourself with people with those similar goals. Because trust me, I found out that if you hang out with people who value materialistic goods, like upgrading their phones every year or driving these expensive cars that they know they can't afford, then typically those habits then start to become your habits too. In the end, it's very important to choose your friends wisely because who you become really is dependent on who you hang out with. This is a famous quote by one of my favorite speakers, Jim Rohn, where he says, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you guys wanna join my next live stream where I talk about how to get started with investing as a complete beginner and hang out with other financially like-minded people, I'll leave a link down below so this way you guys can join. If you guys found a lot of value in this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys can drop me a like or a comment down below because it really does help me with the algorithm. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.